Welcome everyone to the uh, Special Governance and Priorities Committee of Tuesday, uh, February 7th. Uh, Council, this is a meeting to essentially turn three years of our lives into three hours, uh, sort of a time capsule, um, and we'll have a presentation. Um, my experience has been uh, that I would ask that you bundle up your savior questions for the end. Uh, traditionally what happens is I suspect that throughout this presentation that many of those questions will be answered. Uh, if they're not, of course, there will be an opportunity at the end, but the goal is to get the information in front of you and then an opportunity to take questions there. So we just make notes beside stuff and hopefully as we proceed, all those questions will become clear. Um, with that, I need approval of the agenda, please. So moved. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you so very much. Um, and Mr. Mike Lai, Project Director for the Johnson Street Bridge, uh, is here. Mr. Lai, if you do uh, the favor, or maybe uh, Ms. Stevens, if you do us the favor of introducing our uh, people who are here, that would be great. I'm Ms. Steve Staranese, the General Manager of, Manager of Operations. Bridget has been involved in the communication part of, of the Johnson Street Bridge along with Katie Josephson. Mike Lai, you know, is uh, the Director of the Project. Dwayne Kalachuk is the Director of Engineering and and assisting Mike in the project, and Yost from MM&M, &M, who is uh, the consultants that have been hired to, um, to do both the design and the project management of the project. Thank you very much. Welcome all. Thank you. 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 Th
I'd like to, to emphasize that uh, for this project, time is critical. Uh, the project uh, must be completed by March uh, 2016, and that's in accordance with our uh, contribution agreement, uh, federal funding uh, that we received from uh, Transport Canada uh, for this uh, project, the $21 million uh, in federal funding. Uh, we also have to be aware uh, and uh, coordinate with fisheries uh, work windows that restrict when we can actually work uh, in the water. Uh, now, there are certain times of year uh, that uh, the Department of Fisheries and Oceans allows us to do that, and typically it's between uh, July 1st and February 15th uh, each year. Uh, so, um, on, the, on the same uh, theme that time is critical, time is, is money. Uh, so, delays um, uh, do cost the project uh, money. This uh, is the timeline for the project. You have a hard copy in front of you. Uh, that's the uh, 11 by 17 uh, sheet uh, that uh, lays out um, the, the, project, uh, the project timeline. So back in February uh, here uh, of 2011, uh, Council adopted the project charter. Uh, and uh, we then, oops, lost my mouse here. Uh, we then proceeded uh, with uh, work uh, in terms of um, permit, uh, permitting process with the, the federal government uh, and uh, start of uh, more detailed design for the, for the project. That leads us to about where we are uh, today, uh, involved in the marine early works, uh, where the TELUS communication lines are being uh, relocated. And um, that work is, uh, is uh, certainly underway uh, next week. Uh, there will be more activity uh, involved in uh, dismantling the, the, the rail bridge. And we see all the way out here, uh, so at the end of uh, 2012, uh, we are intending to retain our general contractor, the main contractor, uh, for the construction of the, of the new bridge. And uh, construction is expected to go out uh, to 2016. And there's a lot of work involved uh, in that in terms of getting the, uh, the steel fabricated, uh, starting to uh, erect uh, the structure, laying the foundations uh, for the new bridge, uh, doing the approaches, uh, and finishing off the project. In terms of uh, bridge values, this is uh, one of the surveys uh, that was uh, done in 2010 uh, as we were going forward uh, to uh, the, uh, the referendum in uh, November of, uh, of 2010. We wanted to be able to, uh, to, to baseline uh, the information from uh, our residents' uh, perspective in terms of the values they held uh, with this particular bridge crossing. And so we had retained uh, Ipso's uh, read uh, to do the surveys uh, for us. Uh, and uh, although, uh, and as you can see on this diagram, although rail is important, it was one of the, uh, the values identified uh, by, the, uh, by the residents of, uh, of the city. Although rail is important, uh, it was uh, uh, it came in uh, last compared to uh, the other values uh, that citizens uh, held uh, uh, held important uh, on this project in terms of having a pedestrian walkway, um, having dedicated bike lanes, accessibility, uh, and heritage value. Rail a rail crossing was was last against these uh, other values. Uh, in terms of rail on the bridge, um, if you recall, if most of you will recall, uh, August uh, of 2010, uh, Council made the decision not to borrow uh, for rail to reduce the project costs. Um, at this point in time, adding rail would be a major scope change uh, in terms of the work that uh, has been completed to date uh, and would require approval from Transport Canada uh, because our contribution agreement which was uh, approved last year, uh, uh, stipulates that rail is not part of the scope of work. So they would consider this a major scope change. Uh, we would then have to do work. Uh, if we were to add rail, we would have to do work in, in terms of uh, providing, um, uh, for all intents and purposes, a new application to, to Transport Canada uh, for funding. Uh, of course, this <coughs> would mean a, a significant delay uh, in the schedule. Uh, and adding significant costs uh, to the uh, to the budget, uh, and as I mentioned, design work would need to be redone. We have uh, our our design team, our consultants have done a significant amount of work uh, to date. Uh, that work would 
have to be uh, redone, so we would lose uh, in the neighborhood of $2 million that has been spent to date on detailed design. Um, uh, further, uh, the city does not have permission to borrow funds uh, for rail based on the November 2010 uh, referendum question. So, um, in terms of the delay of the schedule, that would uh, jeopardize the project. We would not be able to complete the project uh, in time, uh, i.e. by the March 26, uh, 2016 deadline, if we were to add rail in this project now. Uh, the November 2010 Loan Authorization Bylaw um, stated that uh, Council is authorized to undertake and carry out or cause to be carried out the works generally in accordance with the general plans on file at Victoria City Hall. And leading up to the referendum, because Council made the decision back in August of 2010 to exclude rail from the project, although we're protecting a rail corridor for rail sometime in the future, if, uh, if somebody had uh, funding uh, secured to provide rail across the harbour, um, that's what we're planning for in the future. But Council made the decision not to include rail not to borrow rail for this uh, for this project. As I mentioned, the rail corridor is protected as part of this project, and that's in accordance with the uh, new official community plan. Uh, as I mentioned, rail can be added at a later date. It would have to be a separate structure, separate foundations, uh, and we are uh, we have identified a corridor south of the uh, the new bridge, uh, and uh, it would be. And we would expect it to be uh, done in such a way that uh, we would be able to take the pedestrian deck uh, that's, uh, that's on the new bridge and, and recreate the pedestrian deck on the south side of the rail bridge, for example. Otherwise, pedestrians may be uh, in the middle between a rail bridge and a, and a road bridge. Oh, I, I may just add something. You know, there's been some concepts or discussion, well, can we just stiffen the deck or add rails on the deck and, and look at that later? Because one thing you have to keep in mind is the bascule deck is the most critical part of the bridge, and Yost's team has designed it to keep it as light as possible, because the lighter it is, the less mechanical, less electrical things that you need to, to lift it. So that's all underway. So if you start adjusting any weight to that deck, really the, all the design work to date goes out the window and you have to start from scratch. So that's a, a very key component of the, the bridge itself. And maybe just to, to, to sort of to give you some more background on that, Rail is a totally different design code. So this is designed to the Canadian Highway Bridge Code. If you design for rail, you're designing to Arima, which is a rail bridge code. And so you, you can't design the same bridge. It's, or I shouldn't say you can't, you can, but it takes a great deal of effort to change your design at this point. Thank you, thank you for that. <coughs> and that's, uh, that highlights the, the, the point I mentioned earlier about having to redo design work adding significant costs uh, and um, basically throwing out the design that uh, design work that's been done today um, uh, of upwards of two million dollars uh, and I'm sorry and maybe along those lines if you look at the schedule that would what that would mean is we would lose the 2013 February fish window which means because we won't have the design ready on time that what that means is it pushes your project schedule back by at least a year and you will not make the March 2016 deadline, which is your federal funding deadline. Thank you, Josh. <coughs> um, just to uh, carry on this uh, theme further, um, there has been um, no indication of funding uh, for rail from any senior uh, level of government uh, at this point, although there has been uh, a lot of um, speculation uh, that um, funding uh, might uh, might be realized. Uh, certainly, there has been no indication uh, that we've received that that's coming forward uh, at all. Uh, this image or sketch schematic <coughs> identifies um, the, uh, the protected rail corridor as uh, as part of the project, and that's what's highlighted in the dark gray with the red dashed lines. And and that was uh, uh, that also considers the development uh, of the uh, uh, Northern Junk uh, property, so that that does not encroach uh, into, that, uh, into that development site. Sir, and maybe just one other comment on that is that the, the, the way that was envisaged is that the sidewalk that's currently um, 
proposed for the new bridge, would be a you'd be able to actually move that to the south to put it on the new rail bridge. So you, you can preserve your whole sidewalk and pathway system uh, with fairly small modifications. So the, it's definitely making provision for a future rail. And, and in terms of the, the uh, just carrying on the, the, the rail <laughs> issue, um, we really don't know what kind of technology uh, will be will be there in the future. This bridge is going to be here for a hundred years. It's an iconic structure. It's very complex. It's very large. Uh, and in terms of the, uh, the the technology for rail, we don't know what uh, what may be there. So in terms of trying to uh, shoehorn something in now as part of the design, as Yost has mentioned, it requires a totally different design code. Um, in terms of uh, LRT or streetcar or rail, um, we don't have a sense of what plans there are for that. And really that's something that a different level of government is, is responsible for, whether it's BC Transit, whether it's the provincial government. Uh, rail, uh, for all intents and purposes, is, is something beyond the city. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's regional, it's provincial, because it, it serves the island. Uh, so it's not something uh, that is solely within, within the city uh, itself. In terms of council updates, um, the city is committed uh, to keeping council and the community informed and updated on the Johnson Street Bridge project. We've maintained that from, uh, from the start of this project uh, and we will continue to do so. More than 25 updates and presentations to Council uh, on the Johnson Street Bridge project have been made since 2009. The City has held more than 90 events related to the project, uh, including neighborhood meetings, open houses that we've held here at, the, at City Hall, bridge tours uh, where we've taken uh, the public and those interested out to the site to describe the project, the alignment, what is uh, what the condition of the existing bridge structures are, uh, kiosks, um, uh, cafes, public markets. Uh, we've, uh, we and uh, the team have gone out everywhere to communicate information out to the community. Also since 2009, we've received more than 7,800 survey and written responses uh, on the project. Stepping back into, into some history, Back in 2009, um, we received a condition assessment report. That's how this how this project start, uh, started. Uh, was a condition assessment of the existing um, bridge structure, and that's that's part of uh, uh, engineering's due diligence uh, with the structure of that age. Um, the condition assessment study found uh, pervasive pack rust. Uh, in the uh, in the structure, we have to have approach. a piece to show you. This is the piece that flaked off and hit the guy's car that was driving on the bridge. So if you want to pass around and have a look at it, in terms of the uh, the the, the pack just rust, souvenir <laughs> job. <laughs> in in terms of the 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 pack rust and the corrosion, one of the, the very challenging issues with the existing bridge structure is that when it was built in 1922, um, the technology wasn't there to build steel beams or steel plates to the type of thickness that we need today to, to, to hold the types of weights and loads on the, on the bridge. So in order to do that, in order to, to build the beams, the plates, uh, to the proper thickness, what you have to do is start layering steel plates together and then rivet those plates together. A and these are rivets, not bolts, which can be undone. Rivets can't be undone unless you have a jack in. So the pervasive rust and corrosion that was found was not just on the outside steel plates, but also it was evident on the inside steel plates, which cannot be accessed because they are sandwiched together with, with rivets. And that's that is uh, the, the, the extreme challenge with the existing structure in terms of uh, trying to get rid of that rust. You can certainly paint over it, that, that only lasts a certain amount of time, but in 
terms of treating the, the, the actual problem, the rust, we can't do that with the, the, the sandwich plate system. There's also the seismic vulnerability in the existing bridge. <coughs> it was built in 1922. Um, there were no seismic design standards. Um, that's certainly what we want to apply to the, the new bridge. The mechanical equipment um, uh, components are obsolete. Uh, the bridge is 88 years old. Um, for example, the brakes, locks are, are obsolete. The electrical system uh, to operate the bridge uh, is in very poor condition and is obsolete. And the coating system or the paint uh, has also exceeded its uh, service life. So the report we received uh, in uh, 2009, uh, we brought forward to council in April, I believe it was April 23rd or 24th, uh, and the, the report uh, identified two options, either replace the, the bridge uh, or uh, rehabilitate uh, the existing bridge. Uh, the decision of council was to replace the bridge and, and apply for, for federal funding. Um, federal funding of the stimulus program uh, was, uh, uh, was announced uh, early in, 2000, in 2009. The report that we were able to bring forward once the consultants completed their, their study, we brought forward towards the end of April. The deadline for the application for sti uh, the stimulus funding program was May 1st of that year. Uh, so there was not a lot of time uh, to actually prepare the application and get it submitted. So there was a big um, uh, rush to do that. And the project had to be completed by March 2011 under the stimulus program. Later that year, in September 2009, uh, the city was advised that the uh, application for stimulus funding was not approved. Uh, and uh, the, the city then applied under the Building Canada Fund uh, for funding for the project. In October 2009, uh, the city was advised uh, that uh, we, received, we would be receiving a $21 million uh, grant uh, under the Building Canada Fund. Uh, and the project has to be complete by March 2016. In terms of uh, the next uh, next milestone, in January 2010, the alternative approval process uh, for the city uh, to borrow funds to replace the bridge was unsuccessful, uh, which meant we would have to go through a referendum process. So members of the public uh, desired more information uh, about the project. So we took this opportunity to start uh, laying our plans and the groundwork uh, to see how we could gather that uh, feedback from the community uh, before proceeding further with the project. In February 2010, uh, Council chose to proceed to a November uh, referendum and Council also instructed staff to conduct more technical work uh, regarding the project uh, to look at a rehabilitation option for the existing bridge structure, look at the economic impact assessment, uh, develop a plan for public engagement, and to update uh, the replacement cost uh, for the uh, for a new bridge. And this, uh, oh, sorry, the next slide illustrates, uh, in, and you'll be able to see it in your package, uh, the timeline uh, between uh, February of 2000 2010 up to the referendum that was held in November uh, 20, 2010. And in there, in, in that time, uh, we had our consulting team prepare technical documents uh, that were uh, presented to Council in June of, of that year. Uh, that was a significant piece of work uh, that was done in a very compressed timeline in order to uh, ensure that we were hitting our schedule to get to the referendum towards the end of the year. So in terms of the technical work, uh, in June 2010, Council received the um, technical reports on re rehabilitation and uh, replacement. Council endorsed a timeline uh, for public engagement uh, leading up to the November referendum. In August uh, 2010, uh, we present to Council uh, more survey results uh, from Ipsos Re, uh, from both businesses and residents uh, on the project. Replacement uh, 
of the bridge was the preferred choice over rehabilitation. Uh, and that, uh, that we saw in both the, the Ipsos Reed survey and in the mail-in survey. And this next slide just illustrates uh, that there was a, uh, a majority uh, of, uh, of uh, survey responses received in favor of replacement uh, of the bridge. So in August of uh, 2010, Council confirmed, and confirmed, uh, that the, the project would be a replacement bridge. Uh, Council also uh, decided that uh, borrowing uh, for the rail was not going to be part of this project. Uh, and we were directed to prepare a borrowing bylaw and to proceed towards a referendum in November of, of that year. So in November 2010, uh, Victoria voters supported the, uh, the city in borrowing uh, just shy of uh, just over $49 million towards a replacement of the, of the bridge. So 61% voted in favor of that. This past year has been uh, extremely busy uh, for staff and for the technical team. Uh, in January uh, of last year, uh, we undertook a review of project management and, uh, and started a, uh, a look at risk uh, in the project. And that was done with a leading specialist uh, in these areas, Dr. Francis Hart uh, from Calgary. Um, after that process, uh, staff brought forward a report to, to Council uh, uh, with the project charter, which was adopted by uh, Council on February 4th. The charter outlines the scope of the project, the schedule, budget, milestones, uh, delivery strategy, also identified significant risks uh, for the project and any mitigation strategies that could be applied uh, to those significant risks. There was also commitment in that project charter to come back to Council with formal quarterly reports uh, to Council, which we are doing. And our next quarterly report uh, to Council will be February 28th, uh, later this month. And uh, we are also supplementing those quarterly reports with monthly uh, written updates uh, to Council, via, typically via email. In March of last year, uh, the ENM Dayliner service uh, that was operated by Via Rail on behalf of the Ottawa Corridor Foundation uh, was indefinitely suspended uh, by Via Rail, uh, and that was uh, the reason for that was the uh, track condition. I believe it was uh, via the Southern Railway did an assessment of the track condition. Uh, they deemed it unsafe to operate uh, that service. But they did implement temporary bus service uh, in place of the uh, e and &E line uh, that would follow, essentially follow the same route and make the same stops up island. In April 2011, uh, the existing rail bridge, after our structural consultant inspected uh, the bridges, had uh, identified uh, issues with the rail bridge uh, that required its closure. Uh, significant um, elements, uh, structural support elements of the rail bridge had deteriorated uh, to the extent that it was uh, deemed no longer safe for rail, pedestrians, or cyclists. That required staff to come up with a traffic management plan uh, in a very short timeline uh, for cyclists and pedestrians uh, because the rail bridge, the existing rail bridge, uh, was providing a link from the Galloping Goose uh, on Harbour Road on the west side uh, of the harbour to downtown. Uh, so we had to implement a detour uh, that uh, brought pedestrians and cyclists over the, uh, the rail bridge overpass and following the S curve uh, onto, the, uh, onto the bridge into the downtown area. Uh, our structural consultant um, is inspecting the road bridge uh, every, every three months as part of our due diligence. And as part of the, the, the overall scheme uh, to, to uh, have traffic use the existing bridge while we're building the new bridge next to it. During the period of May to August of last year, a lot of work um, was uh, underway terms of design and coordination with utilities, in particular TELUS <coughs> and DC Hydro. Uh, we consulted with uh, a number of key stakeholders uh, via rail, Southern Railway, and the Island Corridor Foundation. 
we had uh, begun our permit process with the federal government, uh, both Transport Canada and Department of Fisheries and Oceans. We also had to undertake a separate uh, environmental assessment uh, for the uh, realignment of the, of the TELUS communication lines uh, in the harbor. Uh, so that was a, a separate process, separate permitting uh, that was required uh, for that. And we also had started a pre-qualification process for the marine early works. And the marine early works includes the TELUS work and the, the rail span deconstruction. We also outlined a public art process uh, that our Parks and Recreation uh, Department uh, will commence uh, later in 2013 uh, in terms of a call for artists uh, to produce um, something to commemorate the existing bridge. Uh, and that could be something uh, created out of uh, some steel pieces uh, that we will set aside uh, off of the, the, the rail span uh, when it's taken down. Uh, in terms of commemorating the existing bridge and the, the history uh, of, the, of the existing bridge, uh, we also undertook uh, a dish, uh, some narrative photography and laser scanning, or what they refer to as heritage photogrammetry. So this produces uh, images and uh, digital information uh, that if someone wished to recreate the structure, they, they would be able to do based on that information. Temporary bus service for the ENN Dayliner was suspended by Via Rail uh, in the summer of, uh, of last year. And in August of last year, the train station was closed and Via Rail moved out to vacate the train station. In the fall, we issued tender for the marine early works. Uh, we also confirmed with council the width of the navigation channel at 41 meters. Uh, in October last year, uh, the public realm design principles were adopted by council. And also uh, that month, council uh, decided to retain the S-curve lands that would be freed up with the, the new bridge project uh, as, as green space. Uh, the project webcam uh, went live uh, last fall, and right now that's uh, taking images about every 15 minutes uh, of, the, of the project site. We also developed, our communication staff also developed a public engagement strategy uh, that uh, goes out to the end of this year, and that was also adopted by, by Council. So, and this involves going out, uh, sending information out uh, to the community. Uh, via uh, electronic newsletters, uh, monthly updates uh, with our key stakeholders, um, and presentations if we're invited to, to make presentations uh, to uh, directly affected groups, uh, such as the Victoria West uh, Community Association, Downtown Residents Association, uh, et cetera. Uh, this next image is a, a still shot from our project webcam. So it really has a good view uh, of the entire project site. And as this, uh, and you see the rail span uh, in the upright position. Uh, so this, this is uh, an excellent vantage point uh, for the camera to start capturing those images when that rail span uh, starts to come down next week. November, December, towards the end of last year, the Marine Early Works Tender was awarded to Ruskin Construction Limited. Work on the TELUS communication lines uh, had commenced. Uh, a temporary signal for pedestrians and cyclists was installed at the intersection of Squimalt Road and Harbor Road. And that was to accommodate uh, both cyclists and pedestrians to get on uh, to the uh, Johnson Street Bridge uh, to avoid the construction area that was being uh, the area that is now uh, a construction area that was used as the detour coming up uh, up the goose over the, the, the rail trestle and then down through the S-curve. Uh, so that was uh, completed and activated in December of last year. The project e-news uh, was launched by our uh, communications uh, group and we have ongoing discussions with uh, affected stakeholders and, and neighbors in the area of the project. And the next couple of images, uh, just shots of, of the work that has been uh, ongoing uh, in terms of uh, uh, building uh, deconstruction and work on the, on the TELUS duct area. Um, this is an 
image uh, showing uh, work at the Esquimalt Harbor uh, intersection to accommodate um, uh, the TELUS uh, alignment crossing through the middle of the intersection. Here you see the, the temporary signal uh, is, uh, has been installed and is, uh, is, uh, is operating. January of this year, TELUS conduct work relocation is certainly underway. Uh, and the marine crossing of that, of that work uh, is nearly complete. Uh, plans by our, con our, con our contractor for the rail bridge removal uh, have been prepared. And we are also preparing for a, a workshop uh, later this spring with the community about uh, public realm landscaping uh, to get feedback uh, from, uh, from the public on that. And later this month, uh, we will see uh, the removal of the, the rail lift span. Uh, work started uh, yesterday in terms of uh, just inspecting uh, the rail span. A crane barge, a 600 ton crane barge, uh, will be arriving next week uh, and getting set up uh, for the removal of that rail span uh, later in the week. And these images are just uh, some shots of the work that uh, has been underway over the last uh, couple of months. This uh, shows uh, the what we call the long arm excavator uh, that was working in the harbor to excavate the trench for the TELUS communication lines that had to be relocated. Uh, and uh, as you see, they uh, take the material, uh, put it on the barge uh, that's, uh, that's next to them. And this work follows um, all the requirements um, that uh, were made of, uh, of I Transport Canada and Department of Fisheries and Oceans in terms of working in the water, uh, in terms of having an environmental monitor uh, on site uh, as this work was uh, was underway uh, to ensure uh, that we were doing things in accordance uh, with the requirements of the, the federal government. And this is another shot <coughs> showing the, the TELUS duct or lines that are snaking across the, uh, the harbor. Uh, so that's not a, a serpent or anything on that image, uh, but certainly all the pipes that are snaking across. And here's a closer image uh, of that, the bundle of, uh, of pipes from one side to the, uh, to the other. So that, um, Mike Yost and myself went to Seattle in December. Um, there is a Basco Bridge project being uh, done there of both the same magnitude. It's quite similar to our project, although in some respects ours is more complex because of the, uh, the design we have. Um, there's certainly more funding partners in their project. It certainly is, is staffed uh, a lot more and have more resources. We have limited uh, resources and, and uh, so we are very mindful of where our resources are used. But the next slide just shows their the project uh, chart. I mean, this is just to show the magnitude. I think this chart shows they have over 60 staff dedicated to the project and their completion. It's under construction now, and I believe their completion date is next year. So we found it quite interesting to visit them, see uh, how they're doing their project, to see the complexity of their project. We also had the opportunity to tour two uh, working basketball bridges in the Seattle area just to see what the maintenance is like to get an understanding of some of the components that uh, we'll be doing here and at some point they may come up here and visit us. But I, I think what it really showed to us is just the, uh, the challenge we have with resources when we look at their projects and you know, the vast amount of people they have on theirs. Thank you. And that wraps up the uh, part of the briefing. <laughs>